All right, so we show up, and it's across the street from the Journal Pavilion. We pull in, and it's just these huge-looking hangars. It looks like you could fit multiple airplanes in these huge hangars. And so it, they said follow directions. You know, uh, they have these huge yellow signs outside the things, and they'll say just weird stuff just so only the people that are looking for them will know like it like this one might have said id and then had the pointing ways or uh it says stuff that don't show hey crackheads this is a movie spot show up so we pull up to it and they have this tent set up and it's like army style from back in the day it just looks huge they got these huge air conditioners just blowing on us and I set up and I filled out the information. They gave you a W-2 or whatever that thing is. And um, they have you fill out all the information. They say, you know, there's some breakfast over here. If you want it, go sit down. And we're going to put you in hair and makeup. The guy next to me had hair down to his shoulders. Uh, and they literally said, if you want this, you're going to have to shave your head. Like completely... We want it, you know, we want everybody to look military style, so you're going to have to shave your head. I was thinking there was no way on earth that this guy was going to do it. And sure enough, he shaved his head. So, the five people that showed up at my call time were ending up all down the line, would all end up being homies after the few days. I think we were there three or four days. Um, I think it was... Post before, we were there for three, maybe, something like that. And so, it was interesting, because I didn't know none of these people, and, you know, this dude came in a second ago, had super long hair, and now is bald. And so, that's got to be different for you, because that's got to be odd to, you know, show up at your house and everybody be like, well, what happened, you know? And so there's this other guy, we called him Coach, and he looked like he, you know, once we got in the, all the outfit, he looked like he was a basketball coach with the whistle and all that. I guess he was supposed to be like a military leader or something like that, that, you know, would tell people, you know, blowing the whistle, come on, y'all, whatever. And so we would make fun of him, and we were calling him Coach for the whole thing. Like, we never, I probably only knew his name because of the call time things they would be like we need such 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 and such and that they couldn't find you so me and him and then there was another hispanic dude and then there's probably two other ones uh it's been a while so it's hard to remember little things like that and so we were all talking there addison had still had to wait for their call time by that time i'm already in suit and they had you in full. It looked like you had a bulletproof vest on, long sleeve jackets, and like they, it was hot outside, but they had these huge air conditioners just blowing on you. And it was like lightweight, it made it look heavy, but it was lightweight. And so I had this like huge jacket thing on me, it looked like a bulletproof vest, and that other guy only had a whistle and a jacket that said, you know, whatever, I have the t-shirt, I should, and I'll tell more about that in a little bit too. And, uh, so you couldn't even see the t-shirt underneath my jacket of all, but you had to wear the under t-shirt that they gave you, the white, the white one that you had to go buy, then the t-shirt, then the jacket, and then the bulletproof vest. Then I had black pants on, and then they gave you a fake looking, like, walkie-talkie looking belt that had... A gun and it it was fake, but it you know it weighed two pounds and that's another whole other story. I can't wait to get through. I hope I get through all these stories because I kind of go kind of fast on this. So when they came to shave, they wanted you and I just shaved this morning. You know you can tell these fools wanted it to look like you, baby face. They wanted no none of this. Like I can see. Just a few hairs, because this guy just rushed shaving today. I want it clean shaved. They came up, and they... Looking at you like that, inspecting, you know, person to person, going down the line, the face, and then... So the second day, and I'm just going to tell the story real fast. The second day, I didn't shave up to their standards. I shaved with the normal, like, electric razor that I had. These fools hand me 
a razor that looked like four people had already shaved with it, and some of the ghettoest ass shaving cream that you could think, and they said, go out to that trailer out there and shave. And this thing was like two porta potties put together, pretty much the size of it. And you know, they had nicer ones inside or whatever that you could use or whatever. But this, these are where people were going to shave and do the things in the morning. So again, someone just took their morning deuce and then you're sitting there and being like, oh man, like I have to shave in this thing. And I'd never even shaved with one of those razor things before. So I was like, this is some bullshit. All right, so going back, finally, after like four or five hours, they finally get us into the group of where they're going to take us back to this huge stage. So in that four or five hours, like, you're just sitting there drinking food. They had every Gatorade you could think of. Sodas like crazy. Waters like crazy. And they just told you, hang out. We'll call you when we need you. So the movie people are probably going all over their stuff while we're just sitting in the side thing waiting. So people are playing games on their phones. People brought cards. I think I might have had the Game Boy... Um, and it was boring, but, you know, we were still wondering what was going on. We're getting paid, you know, so I was cool with that. And well, the first day they, I th maybe eight, 10 hours. I think the second day might've been 10 and then the last day was 12. So we go and just hang out, hang out, hang out. And then you're all in these fucking suits. These fucking... This outfit that you had to wear these three days. You're in the suit. So it's hot outside. You got, like, this thing that's a fake walkie-talkie. So that's extra. And then, um... I forgot to tell you about this. We had to wear a beret. Which I'm going to show the portion of the movie that I was... The... Making of. Uh, that I was in. I'm going to show you that in a little bit, and you'll get to see me and my beret, which one of my homies was in the military, and he had to really wear a beret. So I, you know, everybody was making fun of us making wearing the berets, and I was just like, oh, you know. So, you know, I, you know, I was trying to be respectful because I knew one of my homies fought for, you know, our country in one of these bad boys. But it was a little different to where you had to always have it straight. You would have guys... They would come and constantly put makeup on your face. They would come with these little things and just, you know, make sure your whole face is covered. See how my, I shaved today, so there's big skin. They would have had a nightmare with that shit. But they sit there and they come up to you and it would be, you know, pretty girls, but they're oops, methed out on makeup, I guess you could say, because they look like they were tweaker girls, but they would just stare and try to get you know your face all perfect while you're sitting on the set while you're waiting off to the side and the first day I believe is in the one that we got the footage this is either the first or the second day that they got the footage of me and uh, I think it was William Fitchner was there and that was a trip because I had known him from other things um, TV or whatever and they came and had us set up and everything, and then I went out there and I was like, all these people, hey, yo, I didn't tell them, but I told Addison, and I was just like, yo, that, you know, this guy from, you know, the movies is in there, and they're like, yeah, it's William Fitchner, they had just told us, and that's why everybody was cheering, but you were in a different, you know, they called me in earlier, so you were in a different group, and they, you weren't out there when they were doing the, the prep for the day, because every day they would tell you, you know, we're going to do this. From this hour to this hour, hopefully it'll go to that time, which their times are like way off. And so I was all excited and I was like, oh, you know, we're, we're actually next to a movie star compared to the first movie. They were far away, not far away, but, you know, not where you could talk to them and stuff like that. And I'm trying to remember all the dudes that were in there because there was another guy and they was this top hip on it. I, oh, um. The guy from Jurassic Park. Everybody's going to think I'm an asshole for not remembering this dude's name right now. But uh, he was just, you know, just singing the songs, just dancing off the thing. And we had a little entrance ramp, like how wrestling is, how they come down an entrance ramp. I was at a, a door where they're opening it and shutting it. And uh, 
he would walk through, he comes and walks past me and goes, the William Fitchner group came, walked past me, and uh, they did their lines. And first they started out walking towards me, and they literally took four steps. It took like three hours to record it. All these other people are sitting on this other side, and they're just taking literally like three steps, and then... Then finally they did a, a, a few steps and then they had the doors open and then they had to make sure that these people were walking towards this and the background actors were moving as, you know, all this is going on as they're opening doors. So the in the background it looks like people are doing stuff and it was nuts. But they would have, be on these walkie-talkies and they'd be like, all right, well, all right, you're going to go in two minutes and then you'd hear this loud bell and like you could hear it through the whole hangar. And that just was telling everybody, shut the fuck up. Like, we're about to start recording. Don't pull nothing stupid. Don't be yelling stuff in the background because the dudes have the earphones on and anything that's said besides what the actors is, they'll hear it. And, you know, it started World War Three, which when the kid get kicked out, that's exactly what happened. They were filming stuff and he wanted to be jackass and look over... You know, he wanted to be in the scene, and then he was looking over the dude's shoulder as they're looking at him the thing and trying to tell them, oh, you didn't see me or all that. And so that dude was just like, wrap him up, he's gone. So it was crazy. Every few seconds, every other take, you had more of those makeup ladies coming up and just doing that to your face, making sure everything. And like I said, you could have any kind of drinks or water and all that stuff, but you couldn't take it on the set. So everybody had these little cubby holes, or you found a little place, you know, this part isn't showing, let me hide it so when the people come, they don't see it. And so the first day we're filming with the vice president, it's a woman, and she's drinking water and she's putting it down right next to my leg every time. And the, the people would come by and they'd be like, is that your water? And I'd be like, no. Well, they'd move it to the side. Well, this bitch would just go get another one and just set it down. And so I was just like, yo, you know, not thinking. I thought she was just one of us. You know, I thought she was just some random extra coming out that she was a paid extra that was made a lot. Or not made a lot, but in the movie a lot. And so... I think it's cool every time seeing it. I got that release to know. I was like, damn, lady, come on. Why you got to, you know, be, be in my way? I'm just trying to be an extra in this movie. And so in the part that you'll see, all I do is salute the making of... All I do is salute them as they walk by. And uh, so I thought it was kind of bummed that the guy next to me, he was really cool, and he didn't get... You know, even in that making of, even though they recorded that shit so many times. And uh, they had huge cameras. They'd have them and people were holding them like this. And it would be like a body camera. And when they'd move up and down, the camera would stay in the same spot. But would follow the people. It was really high-tech cameras. And they would always be fucking in between the sets. Like you had to stay far away from them and, you know... Or not far away from them, but the people would be setting them, mess with them. They didn't want you touching their shit. I had a gun that was as big as a shotgun. And it was, he, the person that told me, you know, everybody hypes up stuff. But this guy said, each one of these guns is $5,000. Please be careful with it. It felt like it was rubber on the outside. And it was really, you know, it wasn't heavy or anything. But lugging it around... You know, walking around and you got to fucking go in between people and be like, I'm sorry. And, you know, holding this gun. How many times do you walk around with a gun in your arms and you're walking around people? So that was kind of awkward. Um, so I had the little gun and the big gun. Anytime that you wanted to go outside, if you're smoking a cigarette, um... You had to check out your gun. There was this cool dude, and he wouldn't care how many times you checked it in. Just made sure you didn't walk outside of the building holding a fake gun. And uh, so you had to check that out multiple times. You had to check out your badge. Like, you had to take off a whole bunch. It wasn't really even worth it going outside. Because you had to take off. You had to make sure that dude was over there. Take off all your stuff. 
put it down, go smoke a cigarette, come back in, shake it back in, and you had to go through a checklist to make sure each one of your items was there again, and then go off. So I did that first scene a million times, and then every other scene after that, I was just a background person. They would have you walk. Here's the entrance ramp. Well, now they're filming from this way as they're coming down the entrance ramp. So we were just walking in the background. And the door was open just a few seconds. If it even shuts in the movie, it was just, you know, they would have you walking by. So after like 40 times of walking by really fast, it gets boring like crazy. But like I said, any kind of drink, candy you wanted... That one, at lunchtime, they had a little bit more of options. It really wasn't the greatest, but it was, you know, it was better than eating at some McDonald's or whatever. But I got a, a weird stomach, so I was trying to stick to, like, stuff that I could eat. I would, you know, chugging Gatorades like crazy. Um, I'm trying to think what we ate a lot on in that movie. I remember this movie, they would come by with, like, just a huge thing of candy and it was like scoundrel style like they were just dot, 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 like people grabbing it if you didn't come and grab it when fucking you got left with the snickle fritz of candy like you got left with nerds that you know shook every time you walked so they didn't like you having them on the set or you got stuck with you know the popcorn or something like that but these were like it was like you were robbing all subs. you could go up to it and just any candy you wanted multiple gums there were sometimes people walk up to you and be like, you want a piece of gum? What kind do you want? I got four or five different kinds. And he'd be like, where'd you get that? I was here first in the morning, and that was when all the gum was there. Because every... It was kind of like people were... And it wasn't sponsored, but every break, they would bring you something different. Like this time, it would be candies, and the next time, it would be all chocolate stuff. Or the next time it was like fruity candies or just weird stuff that they had. And you would be like, it looked looked like they robbed an all subs right before they had came over there. So I thought that was super cool that you got any kind of candies that you want. Um, it was kind of like summer camp. But it was, a, it was a fast summer camp. But it was all kinds of drama. You had people trying to... I wouldn't say hook up, but like people, you know, you'd have the dudes that were going down the line macking to each girl trying to get, you know, phone numbers or whatever, or maybe they didn't live in trying to, you know, have somewhere to bang the night or whatever. I had a girlfriend at the time, Addison had a wife, so we weren't, I was playing Game Boy pretty much the time, hanging out with uh, that coach dude, and then the Hispanic dude, I think his name was David, his name was David. And they were super cool. Like anything, we would talk about video games for hours, me and that David dude. So, um, the second day, they put us to the side, and they were filming different parts of the movie, and it was a lot of just waiting. Like our points would be, like for an hour, you would just stand around, and then three hours, you'd just stand around more, just you'd be a person just walking in the background and it it gets boring cause you know it's awesome that you're on a movie shoot and it's awesome that you know you're getting all this candy but you know there's sometimes that you want to pick up your cell phone and talk to your friends and at that time no cell phones well people were sneaking them in like you just have to have them off or silent and stuff like that but if they catch you with them on the set, they, they would make a, you know, a big deal about it. So, once you come down from the entrance ramp, it just looked like real, it looked like a, a spaceship, the inside of it. And they had this all kinds of TVs, and it made it look like everything was happening, like a news thing was happening in the back. And so, uh... The second point, we were walking back up this other ramp, and they had explosions and stuff like that going off. Um, it was a lot of stuff in the background, which wasn't fun, 
because you're just walking, and then you'd stop, you'd talk to the person, they'd like, everybody get back to where they were, walk again, just constantly, just, you get to the end of the stage, you'd walk back the other way, and then they just wanted you to look worried, they wanted you to look like, you know, aliens had just attacked, what the fuck are we gonna do, you know, and so, it was, you know, it was boring, the third day is when I kind of gave up on it. And I just sat down. Like, they had this locker room. There was this cool dude that was talking about music. There was this other lady that uh, said she was just done with it. They had some firefighters that were there that were setting off explosives to see, you know, for super effects in the background. And so we just sat on that bench, talked about stuff. They kept us there till three-something that night. And, uh... Man, it was, it was pretty boring, and so you would just sit there and you're watching these explosives and stuff going off, and uh, I was just sitting there talking to these dudes, and we we're like, you know, where are you from? They were saying what, you know, we do this or we do that, and a lot of people were from Albuquerque, and uh, so I had told them, you know, we're going to the Cold Chamber Fear Factory concert the next day, and so. I was just mostly talking about that because I was punked out. I just wanted to get to that. Like, that was just the icing on the cake at the end of this movie thing. And so, I'm trying to think if there's anything that we missed. Um, the food was really awesome. They had dinner at the, like, they would give you food and being like, we're giving you food to take home. Like, they would just have bags of food just ready for people to take home. They, you know, they were good about feeding you. You made sure you had breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. Um, I'm trying to remember what night it was. It was the third night. We were checking in all of our stuff, and I just kept my T-shirt. I just kept put it on. Oh, I got so much stuff I didn't tell. So, I that night I just took my t-shirt home and so now it's mine I guess you could say uh, there was more people that were grabbing them but it was just a great t-shirt or a green t-shirt it really wasn't nothing um, the night that I was supposed to talk about um, they had like a little writing like William Fitchner wrote you know what he had to do what he had to say and what parts or whatever and he just crumbled up, threw it on the ground, so I had stuck it in my pocket. And uh, that night we're driving home, and Addison was like, dude, whatever you want for that, just name it. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, I want that. Whatever you want for it, just name it. He said, I was like, I don't know, that just seems so weird for someone to say something like that to you. So he said, I'll pay for your hotel, just you know, just give me that script. All right, it wasn't even a script. It was just, you know, what he had wrote down. So you got, you know, his writing. So that was even, you know, even cooler. Come to think about it, now I'm at the house that he used to live at, and it's 100% gone. Like, before he even bounced, I asked him just to see what it looked like. And he had said, out of all my things, that's one thing that I fucking lost. And come to think about it, he, or well, not come to, down the line I found out that my friend was paying for his hotel, so he didn't pay for my hotel, my friend Steve paid for my hotel, so that was just a whole, a whole other story that he was lying to people about and stuff like that, so, um, I, I wanted to keep, what else did I keep from that movie, um, that t-shirt at the Heller High Water I got a New Mexico acting thing and then I gave it to Stephanie which she probably threw away by now and you know it's, she's going through hard times at times so I wouldn't blame her but um so I guess I only got that t-shirt left from it and it's a large so it looks like all up on me and so I'll, I probably won't ever be in shape to wear it but it's a cool memory um 
in the middle of hell or high water and Independence Day, my grandmother passed away, and it's somewhere in between, it's somewhere in, it's, it's blurry now, but somewhere in between those two movies, she would passed away, so I went and got, and I'm going to feel bad if I put uh, my Cowboys tattoo, and then, because our whole family was Cowboys and Redskins fans, so that was like, you know, I wanted to get my part of it, even though she was a Redskins fan. I wanted to, uh, you know, get a part of that, so my family heritage, trying to think of what we didn't see. Oh, uh, the day before, the last day, we went to a casino, and I just went to get drunk. I was sitting at the, it's the Route 66 Casino, it's outside of Albuquerque on 40, I believe, if you're driving through town, and so we go, and they, um, they had Aaron Lewis there, I believe, that day. And so I was like, well, maybe we can make it back. But we never ended up because it was way, way out there. So we were just sitting there gambling. And this dipshit said, I'm going to go put $20 in that machine right there. Right before we leave. We are walking out. Just a random machine. Couldn't have been any more random. Fucker puts 20 in it, wins $400. So I would won some... I don't remember what I was up, but I had one enough that I was just like, well, I'm going to go get this tattoo later on tonight, or I think it was that night, so I, uh, we went back to the hotel, got all of our stuff, and then I just told Addison, I was like, I'm going to stay at this hotel this night, I'm not going to drive back to Clovis with you, Roxanne's going to drive down here, we're going to go to this Cold Chamber concert. And he was super Debbie Downer about it. I don't know if, like, you know, there was talkings or whatever, but he was just like, I don't want to drive back to Clovis myself. Please drive to Clovis with me, and then I'll take you to Roxanne, and you can drive to Albuquerque back to back to Albuquerque with him. And I was like, there's no way, dude. No way that I'm going to fucking drive four hours, get in the car, and then drive four hours back. And so, he was kind of, you know, I think he was kind of mad that I didn't want to go with him. But, of course, now, looking down at it, he dro- drove the Albuquerque trip every two seconds because he's gay now. And I hear he's in, like, gay, uh, you know, and there's nothing wrong with being gay, but I hear he's, like, in gay magazines and stuff like that. And, like, everybody in Clovis thinks that he's a homosexual, and I'm just joking that part. But uh, he's a super fairy now, and he's gone out of our lives. But he took that Albuquerque trip many times, and so he was complaining that I didn't want to go. And then, so I call, I get my hotel, I call Roxy, and she's in between Fort Sumner and Santa Rosa, and don't answer her phone for two hours. So I don't know if she's left, I don't know if, you know, she's not coming, and, you know, I sent Addison home, it was a big deal, um... It was a big deal about him wanting me to go back with him. He didn't want to drive back home by himself. And so he was kind of hurt about that. I didn't hear from Roxy, so I was scared I was going to be stuck in Albuquerque now. You know, I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know if, you know, the last three days she could have fucking found somebody and been like, I'm out, y'all. So I was scared. I finally get to sleep, and then um, she had uh, she'd showed up. I believe that night was the night that I got my tattoo. Um, I th- think so. We're driving down uh, Central Street, and I was like, "This is this the time? Like, we have to." Uh, finally, she showed up after like forever. She finally got she probably had nine hundred missed calls from me. She shows up, and we go. Um, I think we ate, and then we went to the tattoo store, and it was something like, just out of nowhere, like, I was like, we should go do this now, and then we're driving around, or we parked, and I was walking around the corner, and this guy's playing one of my favorite Beatles songs, and so I was like, that's just a sign, let's go right now, we walked in there, I just said, you know, this is what I want, they said there's a tattoo artist right now that'll draw it up for you, uh, this is his other stuff, you know, if you want to choose tattoo artists, this is this what this what this guy can do, this is what this guy can do. And it was my casino money, so I was just like, you know, I want to get this tattoo, blah, blah, this. He was a cool dude. He said he'd been to a lot of the same concerts that I'd been to, which, Albuquerque, so, you know, 
you're going to be at the same law, the same stuff. So, I get the tattoo, and, you know, it, it hurt, but didn't hurt. Well, I fell asleep in the bed that night and woke up, and the sheet just had this. Just this part of the tattoo is the bottom part of it on the sheet. Like, it, I'd slept on it, and it stuck to it. So I thought we were going to be charged up the ass at that one. Um, I don't remember where we ate or anything like that. I remember the Cold Chamber concert. Um, Fear Factory played first. Um, I was smoking a joint in the bathroom, and one of the employees came in there, and I thought I was going to be kicked out. I literally took off my T-shirt, ran down. There's this big stairway that come both ways. I ran down the stairway because I'd seen seen him coming in, I, I just hit it like that, put it in my pocket, and it was still on fire, and I ran down this entryway, then I got into the part where the concert part was, and ran down that, I took off my t-shirt, my hat, my glasses, and was just like, at, bl trying to blend into the crowd, and I saw the guy come looking, had his flashlight off, looking around for people, so I was pretty scared, um, Cold Chamber played, I remember, it was, it was good, it was like, you could kind of see that there was still beef in their band, but they were touring to kind of... Well, they just put out a CD after a long, long hiatus. But you could see that there was tension in the thing, but they played a good set. I wish... I'm going to look it up on YouTube now to see what... Uh, what uh, comp parts that they got in there, because that would be a cool thing. Um, I'm about to show you the part where... I'm in Independence Day. I'm gonna pull it up. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. The tattoo dude was cool. I the tattoo. There's a few spots in it right now that you know you can't uh, tell that the, the stuff has gone away. That part right there, stuff like that. But other than all, I'm still happy with it. It's. Uh, I know I I said I got it for my family. I'm the only one that got it. But that was kind of when I was a kid. That was either you're a Cowboys fan or you're a Redskins fan, and so I was part of the Cowboys fan. So I thought that was part that I should um, represent. All right. Well, I'm going to bring you around and show you this part of the movie. Oh damn it. Um. Like I said, it's only a few seconds. Let's see if I can get it to show up now. I'm gonna bring it up. Oh hell! So it was fun times. the The tattoo was awesome. The it was kind of weird that he wanted me to drive home with them and drive the eight hours. And no, I wasn't gonna happen. All right, this is it. It's saying connecting now. Do do do. Do 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 you do you? All right, here we go. All right, I am right there, and it's like two seconds. Let's get that to play over. It's not even really a good picture on that. You see him walking down, and there's me, and there's the entry ramp, and so. I'm going to show it again because this is like the worst angle. I'm sorry. That's William Fitchner. That's me right there. And then that's the entry ramp that they were going down the thing. Which, this thing looks so small. This part that they're in right there. So small. And I never thought that they were going to put me in some behind the scenes things. But that's another part I need to tell is when we found out about the behind the scenes. <laughs> Molly. So, Molly. So, uh, the behind the scenes stuff, my friend had rented the movie, and I was just watching the stuff while I was watching their animals, which I'm doing right now, and I'd seen myself, and I was flip. I was running around this place like crazy, I was hyped up, I was a big part of the property, and I was like literally running around like, with my bears, flipping out, so, Molly, uh, so I had called him and they were at the zoo or whatever and he was, you know, oh you got picked or you got you got on there lucky blah blah hopefully you see me, which you never did. And so 
I thought that was fucking cool. I know. All that little bit that hyped up my story even more when I would tell that because I was in the making of, you know, I wasn't in the movie, but I was in the making of. That's cool with me. I get to see my two pegs second spot. It's on my YouTube channel. If you're if you're watching this right now, you can watch it easy. It's Chris Schober, Independence Day 2 or Resurgence or whatever. But that was the story that I get to tell and I want years down the line I won't have kids but maybe my homies if I've passed or something like that can remember this maybe years down the line YouTube will still be going and I can you know if I forget this story now I have something to back it up and tell it um I'm gonna start telling stories on here and I would say you know, this is in the one of the top like two crazy, not five craziest things that have happened in my life, and that's why I wanted to tell about it so I can remember it years down the line. Just this clip right now is thirty six minutes, so good lord, like that's crazy that if anybody would even watch this. So I, like I said in the other videos, I don't do this for multiple people to watch this. I do this for my history for years down the line. I'll remember what I was going on, what was happening in my life at that time. I wanted to tell this story because it was a crazy part in my life. And hopefully out in the next, I you know, the crazy Stephanie story maybe one day. Um, definitely the Denver trip. That trip blew my mind. Maybe I can get Scott here to talk about it one day. And, uh... Thank you for going through this trip with me of, you know, me telling about the Hell or High Water and Independence Day. Y'all don't fiesta too hard and have an awesome one.